I've asked my sister Rachel to come and share with us this morning how she personally has experienced this truth. God has enabled her to live out the victory she has in Christ in her spiritual warfare. So Rachel, please share with us. So if I cry while reading my testimony, the tears are not out of sadness, but out of a heart that is overflowing with worship of what God can do in a heart and life. Strongholds, we all have them at some time in our lives because of our sin nature. 2 Corinthians 10, 3-5 says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not wage battle according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. We are destroying speculations and every lofty thing raised against the knowledge of God. And we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Only Christ can set us free from the from the fortresses or strongholds in our lives. That is very important because when there are strongholds, our thinking can get all messed up with speculations. I can relate. If someone had asked me if I had any strongholds in my life, I would have said no. But in my heart, I knew that something was wrong. From the outside looking in, I had it all together. But I knew in my heart of hearts that all was not well. I had a deep, dark secret that I had kept for almost 20 years. The secret? I was sexually abused as a child. In my mind, those seven words brought so much shame. And those seven words in my mind defined my life. As I came to terms with what had happened to me, I was filled with such shame. Shame. I felt so stupid. How could I have not known that that was wrong? Why didn't I tell anyone what was happening? Not only was I filled with shame, but I also began believing the lies that shame was telling me. For one, I convinced myself that I had to keep all of it a secret. I also believed that most all men must be out to hurt me, and that put an unnatural fear in my heart of guys. Another, wrong, another area of wrong thinking I had was in regard to the wound that the sexual abuse had created. I had kept the abuse a secret, and I personally wanted to forget it all as well. I would have flashbacks at times, and I hated them so very much. I would try with all the power in me to push those memories out and to bury them deeper so they would never come out again. I wanted to take the whole experience and bury it so deep and then pour cement over top of it so I could just live as if it had never happened. I prayed so many times for the Lord to help me to just forget that, had, that it had ever happened and to take those memories away. At the time I was praying, I didn't understand that God didn't want me to necessarily forget. Instead, he wanted to come in and heal and open up the wound of my past and heal and redeem what had happened. His spirit was helping me to see the strongholds and speculations that needed to be torn down. God's healing. The healing process providentially started as I went through a book with my girl cousins. In that book, the author wanted to make sure the readers were not currently experiencing any kind of sexual abuse. At that moment, for the first time, I shared with them what had happened to me as a child. Because I wanted to let them know that if they were experiencing sexual abuse, they weren't the only ones. But after sharing my story, a bunch of emotions rose to the surface of my heart. Emotions that I had shoved down and tried not to let come up for a very long time. I realized that I was very bitter about what had happened. I didn't understand why God had allowed the abuse to happen. After all, he had the power to stop it from happening. Why did he allow it to happen to me? I was, all, I was bitter because it seemed like I was, the only, I was the one enduring all of the pain of the abuse. I had all the baggage that came with it. To top it all off, the person who abused me was being blessed by God. It all seemed super unfair to me. I wanted justice to be served, and it felt like justice wasn't even close to being dealt out. Bitterness was definitely one of the strongholds in my life. However, God continued to work in my heart, and God used his word and others speaking truth to me to lead me to a place where I was able to truly forgive the person who abused me. By God's grace, I was able to fully release all of the things I was bitter about into God's hands. Later during counseling, I learned that all sin will be paid for, either by the person spending an eternity in hell, or if we have surrendered our life to God, then Jesus has already taken the punishment for all of our sins. 
for years, I knew I should go get biblical counseling, but again, I allowed fear to rule my life. The stronghold of fear that I ran to for safety and felt security in was actually a prison that I was trapped in. Finally, after praying about it one evening, I determined to seek out biblical counseling. After my salvation, receiving biblical counseling was the best decision I have ever made. Through counseling and the work of the Spirit in my life, I was able to see all the lies I had been believing. Not only was I able to identify them, but I was able to, make, to replace them with the truths of God's word. As my counselor said, it's like we're pulling things out from under a dark and dusty bed and bringing them into the light and exposing them. Once they've been exposed to the light, they aren't as powerful as Jesus is the light. My counselor explained I had to choose to tear down the fortresses that I had been building up in my life and destroy the speculations I had been thinking. At first, that felt like a very scary thing to do. But my counselor helped me to see that instead of taking shelter in my fear, I would be taking shelter in God. I would be thinking about the th things based on the truths of God's word. As that sunk in, the fortresses and speculations I had taken shelter in and found comfort in started looking super flimsy and a dangerous place to be. The Lord was not only freeing me from the lies and fears I was plagued with, but he was also freeing me of the many burdens I was carrying. For instance, I thought that my abuse was my identity. As a result, I viewed myself as damaged goods. It was so very incredible when I realized that I did not have to wear the sexually abused label. It was like, what? Like, that doesn't have to define me as a person? I am defined by who God says I am, not by what happened to me. And that was a huge weight off my shoulders. The false view that I was damaged goods was also replaced by an understanding that God is the one who created sexuality in the first place. And since he is the creator of it, he can also redeem it. The Lord also helped me to put on true and right thinking. Now, by the grace of God, when fear or anxiety of being hurt comes, I can think of the truth that I have no basis for that fear. Even if some, something were to happen, I can trust that God is with me and that whatever happens can be used for my good and for his glory. Does this mean that I never struggle with all of those fears anymore? I wish, but now I have the correct weapons to fight the battle and to keep my focus on Christ instead of myself. I also have right thinking and a better understanding of how to push my thoughts through the grid of God's word. By God's grace, I am destroying the fortresses and strongholds that have kept me captive for so long. There is much more I can share, so please, um, you can talk to me if you want to hear more or are interested in finding assistance to live in freedom from a stronghold. I am so thankful that God has rescued me out of my prisons of fears, anxieties, and burdens. I am also eternally grateful for his spirit and his word that can transform even my life. A verse that my counselor shared with me this week that sums up so well how thankful I am for the work that God has done in my life is Psalm 9, 1 to 2. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing the praises of your name, O Most High.